Hello everyone, Berserkit here and welcome to my series called Total War Mod Review in which I review many different mods for the games of the Total War franchise. This is my 50th video so today I'm gonna review something a little bit more special and personal. As you may not know, I'm Bulgarian and for the most part I hate my country, but if there is one thing that I like about it, that is its history. So that's why I present to you Bulgaria Total War which is a mod for Medieval 2 Total War. I'm gonna review the advantages and disadvantages of the mod and give you my opinion about it. Let me start with the advantages. First, the mod adds two playable campaigns. The early one starts in 1072 AD and the high one starts in 1222 AD. In both campaigns, each turn takes half a year instead of a whole one and your units move three times faster than they did in the vanilla on the campaign map. Which leads me to the next advantage. There are two new factions. One is obviously Bulgaria and the other one is the Latin Empire. Bulgaria has its own unique units and campaign objectives in both campaigns, but the Latin Empire is not really new. It basically replaces Milan in the high campaign and it practically is Milan, only with different territory and reskinned units. Speaking of reskinned units, pretty much all of the western factions are kinda reskinned. Some of their units, especially the unique ones, look totally different and also have different names. Also, some of them have some new units added but for the most part they are usable only in custom battles and all of them are just standard units that you would recruit after a crusade is called. Most of the factions will actually speak in their native languages thanks to the Xenophobia mod which takes the voices from the different voiceovers of the game and implements them to the campaign map. So this way, the French will speak French, the Holy Romans will speak German and the Bulgarians will speak, well, Russian. Which is completely historically accurate since back then all the Slavic countries spoke Slavic which is extremely close to modern Russian. Fiorini, Corone. Qualunque cogno va bene per me. Ich bin nur ein Feind der Ketzerei, mein Herr. Que pensez-vous de la beauté française? I can greet you, but not serve you, Lord. Contad vuestras bendiciones, no a vuestros enemigos, noble señor. Sachtite svoje dobrodjetelje, no ne svojih vragov. The mod also makes the Eastern European region a little bit more detailed by adding 30 extra settlements and also some new models for castles and cities. Constantinople and possibly a few other settlements are renamed which can sometimes be a little confusing. And last but not least, a couple of submods concerning AI behavior are added. The battles will be longer thanks to the realistic combat mod and in overall the AI will be a lot smarter in every possible perspective. When I think about it, this is probably the mod's biggest advantage and it is something that you feel from the very first turn you play. The AI will be managing its troops much better, for example you won't be attacked by armies without the presence of a general very often. And the AI will be just as smart on the battlefield, it will try to outflank you, ambush you and so on. Also, when you approach another faction with a diplomat, it won't be as easy to achieve a diplomatic agreement as it was in the vanilla. But as much as I like the mod, I should talk about the disadvantages. There are two really major ones that I want to concentrate on. I'll start with the biggest one. Once you launch the mod, all of your settings and key bindings will change. The mod has its own preset settings that are simply awful. For example, your default resolution will change to 1024 by 786 for both the campaign and the real-time battles. Also, the camera will move as slowly as possible and your controls will be genuinely horrendous. And that is not all. Every time you quit the mod and start it again, all of these things will reset so you'll have to go through the options menu each time you want to play. But once again, this is not all. The mod will apply the same settings for all of your kingdom's campaign which believe me is horribly annoying. However, don't lose all hope. I haven't tried this but I'm pretty sure that you can fix this problem yourself by messing up with the program files of the actual game. And the next major disadvantage, which thankfully is not as terrible as the previous one, is concerning the real-time battles. As I said earlier, the mod makes the AI smarter, but for some reason makes your own units dumber. In some cases, they simply refuse to do what they're told, or just randomly stop doing anything in the middle of the battle. This gets the most annoying during siege battles, when half of your units will climb the walls and fight, while the other half will just stay in front of the castle or city doing absolutely nothing. Apart from some minor disadvantages that don't affect your enjoyment at all, there's one more thing that I feel like I should talk about. The mod is really hard to find anywhere on the internet. I only found it on two places. One of them was Gamers Hill, where you can find pretty much every Total War mod ever, and the other one was a Bulgarian torrent site. However, this is version 2.0 of the mod, which is not the latest one. I made a research and apparently there used to be a more developed version, but the modders had an argument so they took it off from the Total War Center, their official site and pretty much everywhere else. But there is good news, there are a new team of modders and volunteers that are currently working on improving the mod, although I doubt they will ever finish it. 
Anyways, if you want to check it out, don't waste 15 minutes browsing Google, just go to the description where you can find a link to download the mod. Now that I'm done with the advantages and disadvantages, let's see what Grateful Bulgaria Total War received. I give this mod 7.5 out of 10, which might be a little bit more than it deserves. Don't get me wrong, Bulgaria Total War does many things extremely well and I enjoyed myself a great lot playing it and believe me I played it for more than just a few hours, but it's aimed at a very certain audience and it has some major bugs. I mean, there is no reason to download the mod if you're not gonna play as Bulgaria. For people like me, who have never played as their own country in any Total War game, this is absolutely fantastic, but still, not everyone will enjoy it, which is completely understandable. Anyways, these were all the major advantages and disadvantages of the Bulgaria Total War mod. Hopefully after watching this video you'll be able to decide whether to download and install the mod or not. Once again, if you wanna check it out there is a download link in the description. My name is Berserkit and I hope you liked the video. See you next time, goodbye.